Hello and welcome to It's All Good. I'm your host Latavia and I'm back for another episode. Thank you all again for listening and sharing with me in celebrating one year. Um, it's definitely been eventful learning all of those things and also, you know, sharing in my experience of skydiving. But as usual, I want to start with something that I'm grateful for, but just in reflecting on this past week, this year, there are so many things that I'm grateful for. And I know that I've said multiple times that I'm grateful to be alive, grateful to be employed. Um, and so that is still a constant, but I wanted to spend a little time this week just kind of talking about a few different things, people that I'm grateful for. And I guess starting with family, um, for those who, some of you know me, some don't, but, and I don't know how much I've talked about this um, on previous episodes, but my dad was in the military. I'm a military brat, so to speak, um, but we moved around like every two to three years. And as a result of that, I didn't grow up around my extended family. Uh, I would say my parents did a great job of making sure we visited as many times as we could. Um, when we lived here in the States, it was at least two to three times a year, if not more. When we were stationed overseas, that didn't happen as often because flights weren't cheap. And, you know, taking four people back and forth isn't um, always that easy. But I say all that to say that because we grew up, I grew up um, all over I didn't get to grow up, you know, kind of down the street or in the same city as my grandmothers, as my cousins, my aunts and uncles. And so I don't have as strong of a relationship with them um, or with some of them as I would like to or as, as they have with each other. Because the majority of my cousins, my aunts and cousins on both sides, you know, they all grew up within 20 to 30 minutes of each other and were there just kind of day to day and so my sister and I at the most I know when we were younger usually every summer it was at least a week or two that we would spend with both sides and so with that time there would be sleepovers you know seeing as many people as possible and I really cherish that time and even now I am grateful for it because the bonds you know however strong they are that I do have with my extended family are rooted in that, those times that we spent there. And I'm grateful for it. And as I've gotten older, or as we've all gotten older, you know, thanks to social media, it's a little easier to stay in touch. Um, still don't, so don't see each other as often, but anytime that I'm able to see them communicate, whether it be face to face, over the phone, social media, I'm grateful and also grateful for the opportunity to build relationships with them as we all have become adults and, you know, living our respective lives. I, I think I've mentioned before how a lot of my family are entrepreneurs and, you know, they're doing their thing. Uh, so kind of what got me to, I guess, thinking about this or wanting to talk about it is unfortunately, I had a death in the family recently. Um, it was somewhat related to COVID. I'm not going to get into all the details, but because of COVID and all of the different uh, restrictions and safety precautions that we're taking, the funeral was very, it was outside. Um, wasn't as many people, understandably so, people concerned about social distancing, um, wearing a mask. Um, it was much shorter, but all of those things considered, as much as I am sad about, you know, the death of a family member and that it took that to bring family together, in the midst of that, I was still able to see and even meet some family members, um, you know, because parts of my family are all over the country. So, you don't we don't get to see everyone all the time. And even my, I guess, immediate family, uh, because they live in North Carolina, I don't. I don't get to see them as often. And even with, with COVID, it's even less. But being around family this past weekend was, like I said, bittersweet in the sense that we were coming together to celebrate 
life. Um, you know, I am grateful that my he is my uncle is no longer in pain. He, you know, he is resting. He is at peace. And I am praying for peace for my aunt and my other family members, you know, as they are, as we all are processing that and moving forward. But like I said, I'm also grateful for the ability or the opportunity to see family, to spend time with them, socially distanced, which also made it very just different and a little awkward because, you know, everybody was keeping their space, everybody wearing masks, wanting to hug or embrace people, but everybody's fist bumping or elbow bumping, just trying to be supportive, but also be mindful of the fact that we are still in the middle of a pandemic and COVID-19 is very real. Uh, but just, it's like, oh, wow. It's I wish it didn't take funerals for people to come together, for family to come together, but that's the rea the reality of it is that funerals tend to serve as many family reunions um, in a very weird way. But like I said, I'm grateful nonetheless. And I hope that for those of you, whether you've experienced loss recently or not, that you, in spite of or in the midst of this pandemic, are doing everything that you can to stay connected with family seeing them as often and safely as possible you know thankfully for technology we are able to do video calls and still see each other even if we can't physically be in each other's presence so like i said i just i'm grateful for family grateful for the opportunity to see them to spend time with them and like i said this past weekend i was with extended family or around some extended family being able to laugh in the midst of the sadness, um, also with my immediate family. It seems small, but it was also kind of big that just my immediate family, like my parents and my sister, we all rode together in the same car. And we haven't done that in I don't know how long because we all live in different places and often we're get you know, if we're going to a central location, we're arriving differently or separately. And so that was nice, just even for that small amount of time to be able to just share that. It was kind of, in some ways, you know, reminiscing on when I was younger and we would do family trips. So just grateful for that. And I am hopeful that when, I can't even say when we get back to normal, because normal is so relative and I don't see us going back to the way things were before, but when it is safer for larger groups to gather, um, I am looking forward to the next family reunion where we can come together on a more joyous occasion um, and be able to, to actually hug each other, embrace, and not have to be so far apart, not wearing masks, but who knows the way things have been going. I'm really starting to believe that mask may mask are the new normal or will be the new normal in the sense of always having to have them in some way shape or form if that's the case i will comply because i'd rather be safe than um you know make a fuss about mask and that goes for all of you people out there who are still complaining about wearing a mask or protesting wearing a mask it's 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 for your safety it's for the safety of others so i'm not gonna harp on that part too much but um just in thinking about life and family gratitude um this past weekend i guess i'm still trying to process also the fact that chadwick bozeman passed away um one that he passed away and he was so young and it just was shocking and it seems like there have been countless um, deaths this year, uh, just across the country, or across the board, but also in terms of celebrities or those who are or were legends, icons in their own right. Um, but just hearing about that really took me by surprise, just kind of shook me more than I was expecting. Obviously, I didn't know him. Uh, but definitely a big fan of him and his work. Uh, but then also to find out that 
not only did he have cancer, he's known or he was diagnosed with cancer four years ago. And not just saying, okay, I have this and choosing to still be selfless and to give of himself, of his time, his talent, and do it with grace. Um, and still, I I'm sure the decision about the types of roles and the projects that he would do, he had already made up his mind about before, you know, being diagnosed with cancer, but still pursuing that in the midst of and not making excuses. Um, I can only imagine what that was like for him um, and also his family and those close to him too, but he just kept pushing. And so to know that for four years or the last four years, he had been battling cancer, dealing with that, but still pushing through, still persevering. And like I said, I was a fan before. I appreciated him, the work, the speeches, uh, you know, any type of acceptance speech or any interviews that he did. Just He was always insightful um, and I don't know, it was just there was this, an aura about him, I guess, is of just of confidence, of peace, of grace, of he knew who he was, he knew whose he was in the sense that, you know, he was a child of God, he acknowledged God. And this past weekend, you know, several people posting about him, his passing, what he meant, the impact that he had on the world, specifically on Black people and Black children. Um, and being black, you know, playing or being Black Panther. Uh, but also in that, and just looking back at different videos of of him and in interviews, it's, I, I got an even greater appreciation for the things that he was saying. Um, and I think I, I posted one, I reposted one that I saw. It was his acceptance speech um at the NAACP awards and it was something it was for Black Panther but he was talking about the fact that in the midst of trials you know we should be grateful for trials and tribulations um because those are the things that make us stronger and we rejoice or celebrate in those things and in listening to him I'm like oh this that's familiar and it's uh i think it's james chapter one two and three but it essentially counted all joy when you fall into diverse uh, situations or tribulations because you know that and i'm paraphrasing but you know that going through these things work your faith and increase your faith and strength and it's it's hearing that and then now knowing okay at that point he was battling he was dealing with cancer and he was fighting for his life but still choosing he was choosing to be joyous choosing to walk in and fulfill his purpose and i'm grateful that he knew what his purpose was that he was resolved in that and did not allow anyone or anything to deter him from that and i'm i'm certain he had days that were harder than others but to know that in the last four years, I think I read that he filmed or worked on at least seven movies in the last four years, all while, you know, in the midst of having surgeries, getting chemo, and dealing with all types of public critique and ridicule about his appearance and weight loss, uh, because people are humans are evil or we can be evil and when we don't know what's going on uh we speculate and if it's something that doesn't line up with what we want or how we think things should be you know we talk about it and right wrong or indifferent i wasn't aware of all of the the ridicule he was receiving i did see or notice that he had lost weight but i just attributed to him doing that for a role or hey he's just losing weight i didn't put that much thought into it because i know that oftentimes actors you know they put on or lose weight for respective roles didn't think anything of it and that's his life he does what he wants to do uh but like i said i'm just i'm grateful for him grateful 
for the work that he was able to do and also that the world got to see it. Now, I was familiar with him long before Black Panther, but I was reading an article, I think it was ABC, that were talking about, oh, prior to achieving fame as Black Panther, he did some other movies. And I'm just like, mm, maybe y'all didn't know about him, but I or we knew about him before he became Black Panther or did Black, pa Black Panther. Um, and I was just thinking about some of the movies that he was in, most of which he played a iconic uh, figure in history, you know, Jackie Robinson, James Brown, Thurgood Marshall. Uh, I don't know, and recently, I think it was The Five Bloods, he played one of the, um, I guess, the commander of the, the squadron. Um, but even in that of just a, the role that he was, he played in that one is of a young, confident and fierce leader that was aware of who he was and the injustices that black men or black people faced in America, even though they're over in Vietnam fighting a war uh, for a country that treated them less than when they were home. Um, so even in that, and I was, like I said, 42, I thought he was amazing. He was amazing in everything that he did. But if you have not seen these movies, um, I noticed a lot of them are now being played on TV and probably will continue to be played um, in coming weeks or months. But just some of the ones that I know for a fact he was in, in terms of a leading role, if you haven't seen, I would strongly recommend you do, is 42. That's where he played Jackie Robinson. Um, I think it was called Get On Up and the one where he played James Brown. Uh, Message from the King, I believe, is supposed to be based in South Africa. I know that's on Netflix, um, but it's kind of him going to look for his sister. Uh, just kind of that journey. 21 Bridges, that came out last year. Five Bloods, that's on Netflix. It's a Spike Lee movie. Um, all are great movies all around, um, not just his role or not just his character. Marshall, of course, is about Thurgood Marshall and not... One of the things that I did appreciate about that is it wasn't the story that I think most people associate Thur associate with Thurgood Marshall. Uh, it was more about like when he was getting started and um, specifically with the NAACP and one of the landmark... Uh, was a landmark case that he helped um, and where he actually represented. And this was before Brown versus Board of Education, which I, I know for the most part, people who are aware of Thurgood Marshall kind of on a broad level, um, most know, or at least hopefully most know that, you know, he was the first uh, African-American Supreme Court justice and he was involved in the litigation for Brown versus Board of Education. But long before those, those um, major uh, moments or milestones, he was still very much, he was very instrumental in a lot of civil rights legislation, um, kind of individually as well as working with the NAACP. So recommend that you see that as well. I feel like I'm forgetting one. I did read that he was filming uh, Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, so I'm not sure where they were in that in the process of that, if it was completed or how that will uh, play out, but I believe it's supposed to come out next year. There's, I'm sure there are other things, other movies, um, other shows or things that he was a part of, uh, but definitely take some time. Like if you didn't know who he was, educate yourself. Oh, and I'm sorry, of course, Black Panther. So, you know, you have Black Panther. He, before Black Panther came out, I believe it was Avengers Civil War or I'm not a Marvel head, so I'm still new to that, but I know it was I want to say it was the Avengers Civil War and then, of course, Avengers Endgame. Um, so he's a part of the in in Avengers franchise. Um, but speaking of Black Panther, I have also seen some different speculation things going around about how they're going to handle Black Panther 2 and whether or not 
they will replace uh, T'Challa or if Shuri should become the new Black Panther. I think I saw something about Killmonger coming back from the dead and becoming the new Black Panther. Only thing I'm hopeful that they do still move forward with Black Panther too, but I definitely don't want them to replace him. Um, I don't like when shows or movies do that because it's just like, hey, I know that's not the same person. I don't care what you say or how close it is. Let's not do an Aunt Viv or Harriet switch. Don't like those things. Um, so I would be good with either Shuri becoming the new Black Panther or Killmonger. Just don't replace him. Like, you know, acknowledge right in or, you know, acknowledge that he has passed away or however that happened. Acknowledge and honor him, but don't try to replace him because it's just, it's disrespectful to say the very least and it's unnecessary. And I'm sure for those who are true comic book readers and Marvel fans, they have much more insight in terms of how the story actually goes, how things play out. I'm a novice when it comes to um, the Marvel Universe and comic books in general. Uh, I know a lot of the Avengers I watched because I was told it would help me better understand Black Panther and some of the other things that uh, came out after. But overall, like I said, I just want to say that I'm grateful for Chadwick Boseman, for his life, his work, the legacy that he has left, um, and definitely praying for his family and and as they are family and friends as they are dealing with and, and grieving his passing. And kind of in thinking about all of that, there's been a lot of death, a lot of sadness uh, this week there was another versus battle which for myself and i'm sure a lot of other people was a very welcomed bright spot a moment of joy nostalgia reflection and if you don't know what i'm talking about i'm talking about brandy versus monica the versus battle that happened august 31st uh, versus uh i was a little late to the party in terms of the versus battles, but I am grateful for them, um, for them creating it and it becoming a bright spot in the midst of this pandemic. Another testament to the creativity, creative genius of, I'll say of Timberland and Swiss Beats, but also just the Black people are creative in general that we will find a way to laugh, to joke, to celebrate in the midst of any situation and I am grateful that they had the idea that there was the technology and resources know-how um, available to make it happen because it's definitely been some great little mini indoor concerts um, over the last few months especially at the beginning of quarantine when or I should say beginning of the pandemic when we were uh, the quarantine was a bit more strict. Um, just being able to watch, enjoy. Um, I know uh, my friend and I have definitely treated it like some actual concerts are going out a few times of just, you know, some people even getting dressed to say, hey, I'm going to this concert. I'm getting ready for the verses. So that's been great. But Brandy versus Monica was definitely one of the ones that I was looking forward to. I am a big fan of both of them. I know going into it, a lot of people were Team Brandy, Team Monica. I said it before and I'll say it now, I'm Team both because I appreciate both of them and their talent, the music that they have made and the contributions they've made, not only to music, but just to the world in general. Um, with that being said, if you did watch um, and if you didn't, I believe it's available now online. You can always go back and watch it. But whatever the the beef or the issue, whatever rumors, whatever that was that they had between the two of them, um, they said that they were able to talk before the verses began and that that was the first time they'd been in the same room in like eight years. So whatever the case is, 
I do hope that they actually, they genuinely addressed whatever the issues were and they were genuine in that and they were able to resolve it, put it behind them, or at least figure out a way to coexist moving forward. Uh, I like to take people's word for it when they say that they did something. However, <laughs> watching it, it definitely appeared to be some level of tension. Um, I don't know if that's just because I think Brandy's just a bit awkward um, and maybe not sure or maybe it's nervous energy. Monica's outfit was great, but it, she also looked a little uncomfortable. So I don't know. A lot of different things. Plus, I wasn't there outside looking in. Um, but that aside, I was so grateful for it because, one, like I said, I love them. There have been plenty of times where even when, you know, back when I was working in an office, um, I would have a Brandy or Monica station on or just both. Um, I feel like I identified more with Brandy growing up for one, the music, but then also she was on TV. She was someone who looked at, looked like me um, and she had braids and like not just regular braids. She had all the different types of braids and styles. And I would always, I wore braids a lot. And then I was always trying to figure out how can I get my braids like Brandy or Moesha, uh, which was funny because there were definitely some Moesha vibes last night with her uh, reading her poems or having her book there, which, hey, teach his own. She definitely came out looking very um, artsy. Uh, I'll leave it at that. But the music, it was great to hear them play the music. And I guess I should say in terms of Monica, love her music. I feel like as I've gotten older, I definitely, I guess, relate more to Monica's music or listen to it more in terms of, um, in connection to relationships or just life. Uh, but they are very different people. They have different styles. Their voices are different. I think both are great vocalists. You know, I know there's people go back and forth about whether or not one is a better singer or one can't sing one can i'm gonna leave that to everybody because like i said i appreciate both of them and i was just happy that they were doing it or that they did it and i got to hear the music um it did start off very different than i thought uh, they it was like they were easing into it and it's like wait when are you gonna play this or are you gonna play that uh I knew or I had every expectation that the boy's mind was going to be played. Thought it would have got played earlier. You know, I honestly thought they might have started off that way, but instead they ended with it. Was hoping there was going to be a bit more performing, like live singing. They both sang a little bit, um, some harmonizing. They did a lot of talking in between, which some of it I could hear, some of it I was paying attention to, most of it I wasn't. So, because that's where it started to seem like there was shade go, um, being thrown back and forth. But who knows? Once again, that's their business. But some of, I mean, there were some songs, like when they started playing some of their new stuff, it was good, but I don't enjoy it as much as I did some of their older ones. But Angel of Mine, So Gone, um, Love All Over Me, Have You Ever, Almost Doesn't Count. I think she played the boys, not the boys, mine, I'm sorry. I think she played, I, yeah, she played I Wanna Be Down, Sitting Up In My Room, um, Best Friend, which is one of my favorites, um, Missing You, he is. So I, they played a lot of their hits. I still think there were some songs that they could have played that weren't played. Like they they ended with the boy is mine, but I thought they would have also done their other song together. Um... But hey, overall, I'm grateful that it happened and we got to hear it. Was definitely in here singing my heart out. I'm not a singer, but hey, you couldn't tell me that last night because I was doing it. And then um, roommate and I were definitely going back and forth on The Boy Is Mine. Um, and I was actually, as we were doing it, it made me think back to when I was younger and my dad would be taking my sister and my friends and I somewhere. And if the song came on, or we'd ask him to play it, he would have to suffer through all of us singing it, you know, doing the different parts. So, Dad, I'm sorry, but I'm grateful that you were willing to put up with that. Uh, but like I said, it was a great, 
a great time, great way to kind of put aside the sadness for a moment. You know, it doesn't go away, but just kind of a momentary break of or release of, hey, let me just enjoy this music, think back. And then, of course, it gave the opportunity for a lot of different think pieces and discussions and whatever back and forth um, memes. There were several of those. But um, like I said, I don't think there was a winner. I enjoyed it. I know there's obviously there's some who think uh, one or the other one. I think it's I was saying I said this or had this thought last night watching it is just like to say who wins is for the most part music and music enjoyment is subjective like at the very base level so there is people there are people who can argue you till they're blue in the face as to why one person won while there's others who can do the same for the other person but it's subjective like with music in general it's subjective and there's very few songs or very few artists where I think there's a universal understanding or agreement that hey this song is great or this person is great but otherwise it's no I like it and I, I like the way this the tone and I like the way they make me feel or how this song makes me feel no matter what so please don't get yourself stressed out or your panties in a bunch going back and forth with anybody about who's better or who won like if you feel like monica won great for you if you feel like brandy won great for you but hey let's not forget the fact that the important thing is it's great music we got to enjoy it and i am hopeful that when outside you know opens back up or whatever that looks like when we are able to have concerts again that they will continue versus and you know we can go and do it live and I'm hopeful that whatever issues there were between Brandy and Monica that they have been able to resolve that put it behind them and maybe we'll get more music from them together because I think that would be great and I'm gonna keep working on trying to like the new stuff I like it but I don't have the same love for it as I did the older um things but like I said, overall, just I wanted to spend some time um, this week just talking about things and people that I'm grateful for. And I hope that you all are um, continuing to, I think I said in the previous episode, just being intentional about focusing on what you do have, what is going well, uh, as opposed to what isn't or what you don't have. Because I know for myself, it is literally a daily a daily challenge or um yeah a daily challenge in the sense of making sure i'm choosing joy choosing to focus on what is good what is lovely um what is going well what i do have who i do have in my life as opposed to what i don't have or where i haven't been or where i can't go and what i can't do right now um because overall I'm doing very well and I, I like to believe that most of you all are too and if you're not try to be objective about where you are and you know I think back to the serenity prayer you know I'm not I'm probably gonna butcher it but essentially being able to accept the things that you can't change changing the things that you can and then you know the wisdom to know the difference and so it's easy for me to go back to weight or health. Like if I'm not happy with how I look or what I weigh or whatever, I can keep sitting here talking about it. Oh, I don't like this. I don't like that. But that is something that I have control over. I have control over what I eat, how often I exercise, um, how much water I'm drinking or whatever else I'm drinking. So that's something that I can control and I can change. I can choose to make better decisions about what I'm eating, um, not eating later, not constantly snacking, um, drinking more water, getting up and moving and being active, whatever that may be, whether it's riding my bike, walking, doing a workout, or just dancing. Um, 
but those are that's something that I can change. I have control over. Uh, I can't control what other people do. I can't control what's going on with this pandemic and why it's taking so long for there to be tests that are available for everyone or for us to get those rapid tests. Um, there's a lot of things that I can't control and I'm not gonna get too deep into that. But like I said, I just use that as an example of how you, in terms of, I guess, just kind of thinking through what are some of the things that you do have control over and as I have been reminding myself, I encourage you to do the same of don't be so hard on yourself. We all have habits that we have developed over years over the course of our lives that, you know, that that saying old habits die hard. So it's, it is a process. <laughs> and like I said, I have to remind myself of that daily. Um, and as I'm learning to enjoy the process, appreciate it even when there you know there are days and times where I don't like what's happening or how I'm feeling but just to get up every day or every hour um and like I said being intentional about that and we are going to make mistakes we're human it's inevitable but not dwelling on the mistakes um and I, I can honestly say I'm getting to a point of appreciating or being grateful for the mistakes. Um, not so much that I've made it, but in that I'm able to identify the lesson or recognize what it was or where the mistake was made and how I can learn from it and do something differently the next time. And so I encourage you to do the same. Um, but before I get out of here, I do wanna share uh, my random thought, random shower thought of the week, and it goes back, or I say, um, it stems from last week, I had gone to a drive-in, which was a great experience, but uh, while there, I got all kinds of bites. Initially thought it was mosquitoes, because, you know, hey, it's outside, it's summer. They love me. I don't know, I don't love them. I don't know why they love me so much. But anywho, that was like Wednesday night. I'm itching. I'm just like, oh, this just doesn't feel good. Go home, take my shower, do whatever. And I'm like, okay, it's better. And I looked up different little home remedies for dealing with mosquito bites. So the next day, I make me some baking soda, pa baking soda paste, put it on. I've got some temporary relief. But then that night, I had pain like no other. Doing some more research, come to find out, I had gotten bitten by fire ants, like all over my ankles, my feet. Um, it was just unbearable like I, I'm sure I've been bitten by them before but as an adult I don't think it's happened so I'm looking up trying to figure out what bit me and in doing that you know looking up insect bites and the, the symptoms and what it looks like and then I'm start I started looking for pictures and then I'm looking through and I'm like wait a minute every picture is like of a white person and so all of the examples you know they're showing you what it would look like how the bites look or what it looks like if it's infected or the different pattern and and how you should know, you'll know what it is or what type of insect bit you and i'm just going through pages and pages and i'm getting frustrated and i'm just like so there are you all don't have pictures of anyone with melanin in their skin like because my skin does not look like this white person's and I don't get red like that, although I did in this instance. But it was very difficult to figure out, you know, like what a bite looks like on me because all of the examples available that I was able to see were white people. And, you know, that just, it's like, hmm, another issue or another area where there is, I would say it's not equitable or it's injustice, just whatever. But like my thought is just why aren't there pictures or examples of people um, who look like me for these types of situations? Because we get bit just as much, if not more, as white people or less melanated people, I'll say. Um, so yeah, my thought is just like, so where are the pictures of the people who look like me with different types of insect bites or different rashes or issues because 
we're all using Google and WebMD um, initially to at least just try to look up, figure out what's going on, especially now when there's a lot more telehealth um, or like kind of virtual appointments. So I want to know where are the examples of people who look like me on Google or on the internet and if they are out there, if they do exist, somebody please point me in the direction of that so that I can see them and then if not, I guess what do we need to do to kind of make sure that that is something that's more prevalent? I don't know if I need to start uploading my own pictures or we need to do that collectively, but hey, I'm open for suggestions. Let me know uh, what your experiences have been or what you know or if maybe I just didn't, I wasn't typing in the right thing in the search bar. So either way, let me know because um, I'm laughing, but I'm also very much serious and annoyed by that whole process because it just added another level of frustration for me as I was trying to figure out like what bit me, what was going on and how can I resolve it. Thankfully, they are pretty much um, healed and the pain has subsided, but it was not a very pleasant few days. So <laughs> that's my random thought, my and mini rant um, for the week or continue learning with me to enjoy the process. And even though it doesn't look like it or feel like it, it is all working together and working out for our good. So remember that life is a journey and not a destination. And in the end, it's all good. Thanks for listening and until next time.